We are in chapter 3 of Obligations and Contracts. I am very excited to learn new topics with you. So what are you waiting for? Grab your notebooks and pens. Basically, we classify obligations according to demandability, plurality of object, plurality of subject, performance, and sanction for breach. Let's start with obligations according to demandability, which shall be further classified into pure obligation, conditional obligation, and obligation with a period. What is pure obligation? A pure obligation is an obligation whose performance does not depend upon a condition or a term and is demandable at once. A condition is a future and uncertain event and the happening of which shall give rise or extinguish an obligation subject to it. For example, Anton shall give Henry a car if Henry will be able to reach sales of 10 million pesos for the year 2020. The condition of reaching the target sales of 10 million pesos may or may not happen. The giving of a car by Anton to Henry shall depend on the happening of such condition. On the other hand, a term or period is a future and certain event and it fixes the efficaciousness of the obligation. For example, on January 1, 2020, Henry promised Anton that he will pay the 1 million pesos debt on the 25th of December 2020. The time between January 1, 2020 to December 25, 2020 is a period. Note that a condition is an event that may or may not happen while a period is an event that must happen. Going back to a pure obligation, if an obligation is not subject to any condition or term, then it is a pure obligation, thus immediately demandable. For example, Anton obliges himself to give Henry a car. Here, the obligation is immediately demandable since there is no condition or term. To understand more, why don't we expand our learnings about conditional obligation and obligation with a period? In conditional obligations, the acquisition of rights as well as the extinguishment or loss of those already acquired shall depend upon the happening of the event which constitutes the condition. There are several classifications of conditional obligations. Some of these include the following. As to effect, suspensive and resolutory. As to cause or origin, potestative, casual and mixed. As to possibility, possible and impossible. As to mode, positive and negative. In the suspensive condition, the happening of which shall give rise to the obligation. An example is when Anton shall give Henry a car if Henry will be able to reach sales of 10 million pesos for the year 2020. If Henry's sales for 2020 is 10 million pesos, then this will give rise to the obligation of Anton to give the car to Henry. It means that the obligation of giving a car is not demandable until the happening of the condition. While in resolutory condition, the happening of which shall extinguish or terminate the obligation. For example, Anton agreed that Henry shall use Anton's car until Henry is able to reach 10 million pesos sales. Upon the happening of the condition which is achieving 10 million peso sales, the obligation of Anton to lend his car to Henry shall be terminated. Here, the obligation is demandable at once but shall be extinguished upon the occurrence of the condition. Thus, Henry has the obligation to return the car to Anton. The question now is, what happens when there is a loss? deterioration or improvement of the determinate thing before the fulfillment of the condition? We'll answer that in our next video. See you there!